How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for asking. Before we get started, um, can, can you just give me a little bit about your background, so maybe some information? Yeah, I'm, uh, you know, my name is Jing, and uh, I'm a faculty pianist here at Heifetz Institute in Stanton, Virginia. And uh, I play in the junior division of the program. Do you also play solo piano in addition to uh, accompanying? Um, not as much. I'm uh, right now. I'm doing s some graduate studies um, academically, and so that's during the school year. Is taking time away from performing mm. as much. Yeah. But it's nice. Uh, in the summer to come back. I've been coming here for many years and it's just a really beautiful place to mm. make music. Yeah, definitely. So how did you start playing piano or in music in general? Yeah, well, um, so this is what my parents told me because I don't yeah. really remember. It's it's that period in time when there's, there was some research about how Mozart helps kids get smarter or something. Oh, yeah. And so they thought, oh, well, it would be wonderful for our child to be so smart. And, and so they wanted me to play an instrument. And so when I was five years old, they uh, asked me, well, you know, like, dear son, what do you want? What do you want to play? And apparently, I said, well, I want to play piano. Mm. And then they thought, well, pianos are so expensive. <laughs> He's probably just <laughs> being silly, like the five years old. And so then they waited for half a year and asked me again, and apparently. Uh, I said the same thing and so uh, so they bought a piano it was indeed very expensive and I was forced to practice every day from then on you know it wasn't uh, if they were gonna buy a piano it was gonna be played on and so yeah that's how it all started wow. and did you always like to play the piano necessarily I I I think I enjoyed it because frankly I I was quite good at it mm -hmm. and I won some local competitions yeah and then you know like you know my parents were really strict so they're like well we'll only buy you a Game Boy if you do well at this. <laughs> okay, wow, I'm going to do so well at this. And you know, all this, all this uh, kind of stuff. And I would say, um, I, I feel like music, classical music is something that you only, or I only started to unpack and really enjoy around, I don't know, uh, 17, 18, 19. Mm. I see. Yeah, I mean, before that I played and I was quite good at it and I enjoyed it in that way. But mm -hmm. I feel like I didn't really connect to the music. Connect yeah. uh, in, on a deeper level, whatever mm. that means. And so, yeah. yeah. And was there something that um, sparked your passion for music where you just sort of um, thought, you know, I want to do this for the rest of my life. Like, I want to have a career in this. Or was it just sort of spontaneous? Well, I think... Hmm. Well, let me think about this. So I think there's part of me that was being 
stubborn. Like, uh -huh. like if I if my parents tell me I should study to be a doctor, I will definitely do that. <laughs> Not do that, yeah. And so you know, they 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 told me, you know, that I should I should do this or I should do this, and I didn't. Part of me I didn't want to do any of that. So uh -huh. so part of it is stubbornness. And the other part is, uh, well, you just start to make more friends yeah, yeah. Uh, in the musical community, right? Mm, definitely. And so, and, and I feel like probably it was only starting in in college years when I met or, or I was able to hang out with other musicians classical musicians yeah. okay. so so yeah because I grew up in a kind of small town and there weren't that many musicians around interesting right and so yeah. I was just playing and our high school had an orchestra and I, mm -hmm. I played double bass yeah. for a couple of years and then but it was the first time of just being able to socialize and have fun uh, you know a normal on a normal basis with other people who are just as involved with music yeah definitely yeah and so that was something and then and also, probably, you know, by the time I was already at a high level of playing the piano, it was hard to be a high level at something else. I mean, it's just yeah, simply yeah. life. So right? You dedicate yeah. enough time to something and you don't have time for other things. Mm, definitely. And so, you know, all these... All these things added together. I mean, right now I'm. I decided to have a small shift, so that's why I'm back in mm. grad school again. Yeah. And so, as I was saying earlier, instead of performing during the year, I'm I, I'm choosing to dedicate time. Yeah. Yeah. To something else. Uh -huh. And uh, but still, you know, I I I love music, and that's why I come here every summer because. Mm -hmm. Many of my good friends that I don't see during the year, you know, I can come here and see them. And many of the students come back for multiple summers, and I can, I can hear them and socialize with them. Yeah. And so. Interesting. And throughout your years, I'm being interviewed. <laughs> I'm famous. <laughs> Uh, um, so throughout your years as you know a musician and also as an accompaniment accompanist, mm -hmm. have you have you seen any specific traits that sort of help someone to become a more successful musician? Hmm. I think for me, it's it's being willing to take time to listen uh -huh. whether it is the person you're playing with and it's in the moment of playing together yeah. right listening yeah. is very important yeah but also you know something like what we're doing where you might have some questions mm -hmm. and and i have to you know listen and you listen to what i say right yeah. or just yeah. in everyday uh, conversations because uh, musicians also are are people beyond right just playing music. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And so I, I would say uh, listening is very, very important, and, and to listen as openly as possible. Yeah. Be open-minded with listening because no two people play the same, right? I have mm. an idea about about a certain piece right and mm -hmm. uh, somebody else might have a different idea yeah. and what 
what do we do like fight and <laughs> fight to the death you know yeah so so there's always uh, some negotiation yeah and I think for me negotiation is not about argument like don't you see this this and this uh -huh. so it has to be like that mm -hmm. but it's more about uh, yes expressing what you think but also listening to somebody else definitely and yeah. to because uh, the thing is we we practice a lot by ourselves mm -hmm. in our practice yeah and so the ideas that we start to practice become very important to us of course mm -hmm. and so so if you go to another musician and you don't listen to them it's like all the time they spend in the practice room you say oh it doesn't matter yeah, yeah. it's not important uh -huh. so even if you even if you disagree you'll have to that wow like they spend all this time and 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 if there's something that's different between two people or three people or mm. four people playing together yeah that has to be worked out with extremely sensitive listening mm -hmm. right yeah. so so i always say you're not listening to just the moment that you're playing uh -huh. you have to listen for and almost guess and infer how how does someone else how had they practiced this music? Yeah. or how have they fallen in love with this music uh -huh. in their own way yeah that's the, that's how you can say no you don't say right then no your love doesn't matter mm. that all this then then you say okay well then we have a different we have a different approach can we try this can we try this okay and, and you know sometimes you, you go with one person or another mm -hmm. <laughs> some sometimes there can be a, a, a medium right yeah yeah so so I would say listening listening yeah definitely very important and you know classical music it's a very you know like a niche field you know there's certain stereotypes associated with it uh -huh. and oftentimes you know we see a lot of Asians Europeans playing. Um, but maybe not as much other other races and ethnicities. So, do you think diversity in the classical world could be improved in some way or another? Yes, I, I mean in in all aspects, right? I yeah. mean, it's not a surprise that I was born in China and my my generation of Chinese musicians became musicians because uh, well frankly our parents generation they were starting to make more money mm -hmm. in the 90s yeah, yeah. so and that is to say that uh, studying classical music is very expensive I was uh -huh. saying at the beginning I had to practice because my parents <laughs> were like well yeah. we're spending a thousand dollars in the 1990s yeah. on, a, on a piano well, of course, you know, yeah. have to practice, right? Like, there's so much, and and frankly, a halfway decent string instrument is, is many, many times that. Right? Yeah. And so, you know, there is, uh, there's a lot of that where just, in terms of finance, is extremely prohibitive. Uh -huh. And, and also, because of how frankly white and male the composers we play mm -hmm. right and yeah. and, and the, there's a kind of certain audience around that and it prevents many other people uh, entering from entering yeah. the field yeah. because in various you know microaggressions or unspoken judgments yeah, yeah. that they don't feel welcome into uh -huh. the community Definitely. And so, so that's just from the people who are taking up, you know, and and then, by right, speaking of the right composers, there's many composers who are neglected, mm -hmm. right, and 
And just to show kind of how prohibitive it is, like for a long time, Schubert's music was ignored. Yeah. Because Schubert was thought to compose in too feminine a style. Mm. Right? And so, and, and Schubert is, of course, a white male mm -hmm. a, a kind of composer. So imagine if his music was thought of as feminine, feminine. Yeah. Then what other people? All yeah. the other fabulous composers, right? Lawrence Price, or people with Fanny, Fanny Mendelssohn, Clara yeah. Schumann, Amy Beach, well, many, 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 many others. Yeah. And still living, you know, composers uh, doing such good work. Uh, so, yeah, there, there's a lot of work. That needs to be done, and uh, yeah, it's it really. Yeah, I don't know how. Maybe it starts with us, right? Mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's a big it's a big problem, and we we have to really think about how to engage with it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I have any magic answers, magic bullets. Yeah, yeah. very tough thing to do. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.